use the chain breaker to break this uh, chain here. It's a number 40 double roller chain. So I'm gonna stick a half link in there just so I can shorten it up. Um, that's the smallest cotter pin I've ever seen. I hope I don't drop it on the ground. It'll be gone. I better get something down here in case I do. So there's two of them. I almost threw the bag out with the other one inside. Look how tiny those guys are. Sorry about my dirty hands, but I've been working on the combine. It's almost hard to believe that something that small, they go in here to keep the uh, uh, half link from coming apart on this roller chain. But it's just about hard to believe that uh, something that small, if it comes out and the chain comes apart, can stop a machine that is as big as a small house. Anyhow, I'm going to try not to lose those things. So I got them in there. I don't know if anybody watches Click Spring. He's a machinist slash clockmaker on YouTube. And he's always working with tiny stuff like this. He probably doesn't even have any that big. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try and get this thing back together. We're back together. I probably could have put a whole link in there. That chain's pretty worn, but the, sp the sprockets are pretty worn too. So if you're going to replace everything with a brand new chain on worn sprockets when they're that worn, you can have trouble. The, uh, the, they like to get thrown off and stuff, so that's why I'm just replacing the, the half link in there. That way I don't have to do all the sprockets, hopefully. Because they hopefully will last the length of the combine will last. Anyway, got that in there. And uh, we'll run things just a little bit loose because older chains and older sprockets, it's better than trying to run things too tight. It'll last a lot longer. So, looking at it, I found another thing that needs fixed. This straw walker. I don't know if you can see it there when I wiggle it. Uh, it's broken where it connects with the blocks there. That's a fatigue break. So I'm going to have to pull that out of there and somehow get that sucker fixed up before we start. So that's a big job. So I took a back piece of tin out here so I got more room to work. And uh, now I'm going to pull the bolts off of these sieves and slide all the sieves out. That's the first one. You just slide out on those grooves there. There's three to pull out. Well, the sibs are out. Need a little bit more room. I gotta take those front nuts off of that green pan so I can move it forward and back. Otherwise you can't get at the bolts holding the straw walker in. It just isn't any room up there any other way so that's what we're doing I had a piece of plywood in here so that I don't break stuff when I'm in there working on it because it's, it's kind of flimsy and I'm kind of heavy and in a tight space got the bolts out of those connectors on the front of the pan and back of the pan so now if we duck out it's on a crank so that's the bolt there we pull that bolt out and then that should free that pan up and we should be able to move it back and forth and get it out of our way bolts out and pan is loose so I think I'm gonna Slide it all the way back to start with and do the front ones and then push it forward and do the back ones to take the straw walker out. So the pan slid back. 
and look forward and you can see it's the second one from the outside that I gotta reach up in there and take those bolts off. And the pan slid forward now and you can see the crack up in here that's starting. So now we'll take this block off and then the straw locker's got to go out up the hole in the top. So I got the plate off and these are just wooden blocks that everything runs on. And, uh, so there's kind of a groove in the middle there. And some spacers that kind of keep things the right distance apart. Anyway, that's, uh, that's how that fits in there. Well, first good news all day, I think I lied. I think this one will come out the bottom. Looks like it's going to fit. Here's hoping. Going out the top is a real pain. So there it is on the shop floor. It's about 12 feet long. And I'll flip it so that we can have a little better look at it. it took about oh, just over two hours to get it out of there. It's not the first time I've had a straw walker out of there. Or it would have took a heck of a lot longer than that. So you can see in here where this is cracked and coming apart. That wouldn't have lasted very long. So I've got a couple of old ones that uh, are in the junk. So I'm going to see. I might be able to Grab some parts. I could weld that up, but I'm not sure. I just trust that. So looks like there's a little bit of a crack up in here. This one was probably in here when things were banging around when another one went, and it's finally starting to go. I uh, I hate straw walkers. Anyway, I'm gonna stop for a bit. I gotta go check cows and take salt up to the hills, and then I'll come back and do surgery on this thing. I'm back. So I did some measuring here. I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna try and weld that crack up with uh, the MIG. Uh, I can get to it pretty good from one side. So I'm gonna have to get my heat set real good before I start blowing holes in this. It's pretty thin. I would measure the gauge thickness. This is 14 gauge and it's spot welded to, that's 12 gauge. And as near as I can tell, this is, nine gauge or something it was uh it's a weird in between thickness so the closest fraction i could come to look like about nine gauge it looks to me like it's a little thinner than an eighth and thicker than something else anyway we'll uh we'll get some scrap metal and get our heat set really good before we start and weld this sucker up Well, it was one of these deals where it was going pretty good and then I should have quit while I was ahead. But anyways, we uh, got a pretty decent weld inside there. This is the back inside. And up there I chased the cracks a little bit, got a little bit ugly. And then on the other side, I just tacked, welded the corners a little bit because I figured there'd probably been quite a bit of flex there. So that'll reinforce that. And, uh, and I thought I'd chase some cracks on these sides. Um, I should have left well enough alone, but anyways, these are galvanized and it's pretty thin, so I ground it off and chased the cracks and uh, ground it back again, and uh, it's going to be what it is. So we'll stick it back in. It's going to be better than it was. We'll see how long it lasts. I should have had a net tape me getting this thing out of here so I can remember how it went back in. I think I got it, but... Uh, it's I'm only going to go in one way. I know why it went in the top, or it came out the top one time. I think we're going here. 
Ready to put the box back on. Got the first block back in. You can, uh, sorry, you can spend a lot of time messing with the spacers on these things. You want to have them so that you can see things are loose here, so that it's not binding. You don't want it tight, but you also, I'm trying to lift it up and down. You don't want any up and down play. And sometimes these things are not formed perfectly around, so you can have different, uh, different tightnesses as the shaft moves around in different areas. It's, it's one of those things where you're chasing your tail. If you try, you can spend a lot of time, like I say, but I think this one's all right. Uh, these tin flaps here, uh, they get bent back over these nuts when you're done to keep things from coming loose. And when you're taking it apart, you just got to prime on off with a pry bar or screwdriver or something. So I'm going to quit for tonight because it's too dark to see what's going on up front, I think, for today. And we'll start again tomorrow. I got the front one back on. I had to go down the rabbit hole playing with the shims on this thing. I put it down the way it came off and it was way too tight. So then I had to add shims until I finally get it to where I was happy that it was going to be okay. A lot added an hour or so to this reassembly process. But anyway, that's the worst of it now. Downhill. Putting the last screen in. That's hanging up there. Just got to pry up on that a little bit. There. Hopefully that's got it. Good. These hold it in place. All three go in and out that way. Took a little bit more uh, to get them out because they hadn't been out for a while, but they just slide out after you pull these off.